Today we're in Hershey, Pennsylvania, and we're gonna take a look at the most beautiful cars in the entire world. And I have Chris, and I also have Matt, and they're gonna kinda of go over this car with us. So this is a 1912 Model T Ford touring car. Uh, Model Ts were built from 1908 to uh, 1927. So this being 1912 has brass on it, just one of the earlier ones. This particular car just runs phenomenal. Uh, John has done complete mechanical restoration and just Kind of everybody kind of enjoys the the paint condition yeah. and every time out it gets a little bit worse but you know it's, it's here we use it all the time and and john's not here but if we need to run across the fields or whatever we want to do we can take it enjoy it have fun now would this have been originally painted black or would it have been painted this color or? so originally this one would, would have been dark blue dark blue so yeah okay. all model t's were black except the ones that weren't, which is a <laughs> horrible dad joke, I'm sorry. But uh, yeah, they made a bunch that were blue and some that were red, some that were dark green and, and various colors. Do you know like what sort of horsepower that this is making? 22 Twi oh, horsepower. Wow. 22. But at the same time, like to me, it's amazing. It's 22 horsepower and you can pile four or five people in this and go down the road at 45 miles an hour. And then Chris, you're also a professor at the McPherson College. Is yep, that I am one of the, I consider myself one of the fortunate few. I work at McPherson College, which is in McPherson, Kansas. It's a regular four year college, but we have a program in antique automotive restoration. And so we bring students in and teach them every part of restoring antique cars. Then so, we send our students out all over, the, all over the world to different restoration shops, museums, private collections, auction companies, you name it. Yep, I'm very familiar with the college. And you said this, this car runs, are we able to maybe yeah. start it up or anything yeah, like that cool cool now is that how you normally get into this car from the passenger side that's yeah because it's got okay. there's not see. a lot of room over here i see yeah, okay so check it out yeah. not not the most comfortable but number one thing that that like all the old timers talk about is oh don't break your arm and and so uh the spark advance over here got to be up that makes sure the the spark is not advanced won't kick back. And so as soon as you do that, and then a little bit of throttle, this is your only gas pedal it's right here. So we do that. And as long as the parking brake's on, it's in neutral. We turn the switch on. <laughs> he did. Ooh. Yeah, Listen if you could edit that down to just one, that'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, got the Luga horn on there. Yep. What is uh, like gas mileage wise on a car like this? I don't think I've ever heard that answer before. Uh, probably 18 or 20 miles oh, to the gallon. That's not that so, bad. Yeah, okay. yeah, really not bad. Well, Chris, thank you for your time. You bet. Thank you guys you. are interested in, uh, in enrolling in McPherson College. This is your guy to talk to. And Matt, thank you for your yeah. time as well. Absolutely. Thank you guys for starting everything. One of the biggest cars here at the show is this 1913 Pierce Aero 66. And the 66 refers to the 66 horsepower that this car originally had. Now they only built about 1,250 of these cars in 1913. And to see that it's still surviving is pretty cool. There's only about 14 that are known to currently exist. Now. How much does one of these cars cost? Back in 2015, this exact car came up for auction and brought $850,000. You can fit probably a small uh, classroom of children in, inside this vehicle. I mean, it is just, it has just room for days. It's literally the size of a train. But I'll show you here, it is for sale. It is being offered at Hershey this year. One of only 14 known. Pierce Aero 66. So I'm standing here with Mark Hyman and he owns Hyman Limited and they probably have some of the most beautiful cars here on display at Hershey. I come here every single year and it's a must here. stop at this tent. And Mark, good to have you. Hello Parker, how you doing? I'm doing well, yourself? Good. Well, first of all, I'm great, but I also want to say, I'm really glad you're here because we don't get as many young guys here as I'd like to. <laughs> well, thank you. I see a Duesenberg sitting over here. Can we go talk about Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Awesome, awesome. I know in the car world, you know, this is considered one of the top cars out there and I don't get to see that many very often. And what can you tell us about this car? First of all, let me, let me preface discussing this car by why we're here and what we do. So we have one of the largest classic car showrooms in the United States. We have about 200 cars in our place at all times. And we do business all over the world. We come to Hershey every year and we bring a great assortment of cars, not only to sell cars here, but to show everybody around the world what it is that we offer. This car, back to the Duesenberg. 1931 Duesenberg, it's a Legrand Phaeton. It's one of, it's a very unusual and rare one. It does have a factory supercharger on it, which is, there's only a handful of them with a supercharger. 
So you take a Duesenberg with a blower on it. Makes it even better. That's a badass car. Yeah. That is a yeah, fast I, I, monster absolutely. of a car. Yeah. And, and all of the engines were painted green? They were. Okay. They started in the, in the late 20s through 33. Mm -hmm. They were the most expensive car built back then. And when you bought a Duesenberg, you bought a chassis, and the bodies were all coach built, all gotcha. custom bodies. Okay. So there was, I don't know how many, but 20, 30, 40 different types of bodies you could put on them. And that was very common back then as well. Absolutely. That was the way it was done, really. Right, right. And what's this yeah. behind us? This is a 1919 Renault. It's a French car, skiff body. Is that the radiator right here? Yeah, radiators are oh behind my. the engine. Oh my and goodness. And the reason of that is early on when Renault was racing, they would get stones to the radiators mm -hmm. and the cars would overheat. But they'd put it behind the engine, never any problems. Really primitive stuff. I like the little girl up there. It's a beautiful thing. And then what are some of the cars over here? You've got a 1911 Pope Hartford. And the, the significance of the Pope Hartford is think back in 1911. People were driving these little bitty 20 horsepower cars, little tiny things like Model T's, mm -hmm. like that car out there. Yep. Right? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Very small engines, very inexpensive. A Pope Hartford was a big, powerful, fast car that cost, I can't tell you the exact price when it was new, but it was probably 10 times the price of a Model T Ford. Wow. So this is like a 50 horse instead of a 20 horse car. Mm -hmm. Very, and that's why it's $325,000. And the restoration quality on this car is extremely well and and that's what I, I admire about you mark is that i meet a lot of people that are in the car world they have cars for sale you always bring the best stuff and it's stuff that i've never seen before kind of like that can we talk about that 68 428 down there that's a cool thing but you know that ac is the company that joined forces with Carroll Shelby yep. to build the Shelby. This is on a Cobra chassis, it's right? It's a Cobra chassis yep. with a Frua body. So Frua was an Italian coach builder, and they built the body. So these are called AC Fruas, 428 Frua, and it's an exquisite thing. It kind of looks like a California from the side. It, yeah, you're right. It with, does. With the little inlets down there yeah, and everything right. like that. The last car I want to talk to you about is the Dual Ghia over here. It's not a not a car that I'm sure a lot of the viewers are familiar with. Well, the Dual Ghia has got a great story. There was a guy by the name of Gene Casserole, who was a Detroit-based businessman who owned a trucking company called Dual Motors. And they used to haul cars from the factories to dealers back in the 50s. So basically they had Ghia, which is an Italian coach builder, build these bodies and they use all Chrysler drivetrain. Yeah, so what, what he's saying is these were built on basically a Dodge chassis. You can see the Mopar logo back here. And I think some of them may have had Hemis in them. I think it's a 315 Hemi, which is a real small Hemi. Okay. And I just love this color. And they were kind of built here in the United States and then shipped over to Italy. Well, what they did, the bodies were built in Italy and then they would ship the body over to Detroit and they'd put the engines in them and the interiors in them and complete the assembly in Detroit. Now that's probably why, I mean, that seems like it would cost a lot to, to kind of ship them back and forth. They were super, super expensive cars. They're all bought by Hollywood movie stars, captains of industry and Dean Martin, Frank Sinatra, De Sammy Davis Jr., Lucille Ball, all these people have them. If you want to learn about cars, even on their website, they have write-ups of these cars that just explain everything in detail and it's the most some of the most informative stuff that I've read about each vehicle well, thank online. You. So thank I, you. I appreciate it for I appreciate it. it. Thank you for your time, Mark. If Thanks for your efforts. Keep it, keep doing it. If you're interested in purchasing a vehicle from Mark, you can reach them where? Our website is www.hymanltd.com. H-Y-M-A-N-L-T-D.com. Thanks, Mark. Thank you, man. Hey, keep it down. One of the most beautiful barn finds here at the show is, of course, this 1933 Cadillac V16. Now, these cars were the most expensive Cadillacs when they were brand new, and this one is no different. This is an all-weather Phaeton. They only built about eight of these cars originally from the factory, and there's only really about three known to currently exist. We take a look over here at the, the actual build sheet of this vehicle, which is pretty cool for a 33. We can see that it, the upper panel is black, the moldings are black, the lower moldings are black, fenders are black, the chassis was painted black. So this was basically a murdered out vehicle from the factory. And we can see the owner's original initials, AWA, right there on the door. The V16, obviously 16 cylinder Cadillac, top of the line, 
in 1933. Definitely one of the most beautiful, beautiful barn find vehicles that we're able to find here at the show. You can see all of the patina still on this car. Not, not sure where it was sitting. You can see the patina on the running boards. The top on this car actually does come all the way down that it is a phaeton. You can see the divider glass right in there as well. Really, really cool stuff. Not sure what they're asking for this vehicle. We'll see if it is for sale. And yeah, if you are interested in this vehicle, it does have the, the owner's phone number right there and you can give them a call. When it comes to beauty, nothing is more beautiful than a 1930s Packard. And look at this car. 1934 Packard Series 1105, five passenger Dietrich Victoria convertible Super 8. Now this is a 1105 and the difference is, is of course the wheelbase. The wheelbase on these cars are 147 inches long. We'll go ahead and show you the inside of this car, but it says here on the plaque that this car gets about eight to 10 miles to the gallon. Of course, it has a 348 cubic inch inline eight cylinder engine and produces around 140 some horsepower. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but this is a blue with a little bit of a black. The owner's phone number is not there, but they are asking $200,000 for this car. I don't think you can buy a classier car for 200 grand. I'm standing here with Jim and Jim's the proud owner of this vehicle. We just were walking down the aisle here. I have absolutely no idea what this is. And Jim, if you could help us out. Well, it's a 1915 International. We refer to them as high wheelers now because they've got buggy style wheels and they're tall. International started building these in 07 with their target market being uh, rural America and the farmers network of dealers was already set and they built the buggy type to follow the mud tracks that the horse and buggies made. So is this a, a 197 or what year is this? 15. This is a 15. This is a 15. Okay. They started building them in 07. Gotcha. And I see here that this says Century Club on the, on the front and I'm assuming that that's probably because this car is over 100, over 100 years, years old. Over 100 years old. AACA is the top one there the, or the blue one. Uh huh. That is for achieving and showing it when it turns 100 or first time after it turns 100. Okay. And the bottom one is through the Horseless Carriage Club of America, okay. which is mostly brass area vehicles, and that's the same recognition for being 100 years old. And let's walk through this vehicle. And Now, did it come with these on here? They're, no, this these is... I've had replaced gotcha. from an uh, Amish carriage shop. Oh, wow. Put these on. An Amish carriage shop. Mm -hmm. And and how, how, how do you start this thing? I see in here it's only really got like two levers. Well, yeah, one's your brake and one is your gear and your clutch. Okay. And I can go through that in a moment after we go around because I will start it and I'll oh, show wait. you how it runs. Oh, I appreciate mm -hmm. it. I appreciate it. And then this is the, the, the tag yep, down there, I guess. Yep, that's the tag. Tells that... you the, you know, the, the, you know, the VIN number. Yep. Of course, they weren't very long back then. It's surprising and... that still is readable after that yes. long, you know? Well, in 1915, International come out with their slope nose model which had a four-cylinder motor in it and a three-speed gearbox, pneumatic tires, so the end of these buggy-type vehicles was approaching fast. So this the last is... year for the high wheelers was 16. So after two years after this, and these, these kind of wheels were gone, basically. Right. So, and the owners, you found out the newer ones would work so much better, these got parked. What is this? Is, is this considered a pickup truck, or is this considered a, like a, like a semi, maybe, or what? They refer to it as a motor truck. A motor truck. The gears yep. down here, the chain down here, it's that chain is... Chain drive. That is freaking sweet. Mm -hmm. And it does run, you said? Yes, it does run. Can we hear it run? Yes, you can. Awesome. Now, a few things on the ignition are, are a little more... Modern, I've been running a Model T coil, and for safety reasons, I turned the battery off I, and I turned the fuel off. Makes sense to me. And the original carburetor I do have, but the float is bad on it, so I'm running a carburetor off a Farm Oil Super C. And like most of these old cars, there's a sweet spot with the spark and the throttle. So what, what are you doing over here? I'm just noticing. I'm setting the spark and the throttle right now, and this is the ignition switch itself. So that's the ignition. Now it's missing the cover, so. We kind of make sure we got contact. Okay. Of course, it's kick, crank. And like I said, I'm running a little newer carburetor. It makes it a little easier to start because I've got a choke. And she's not always good to me, so hang on. Okay, we have spark. Hop on and you hop in the back and we'll go for a ride. Oh, we're gonna go for a ride. Here's your shifting lever. And release the brake. 
is the funnest thing I've done all year. Jim, thank you for the ride. You're if welcome. you guys uh, enjoyed that at home, please give us a thumbs up here on the video. It does help us out. Again, this is a 1915 International Harvester motor truck, right? Correct. Awesome, Jim. Thank you thank so much. You. I hope the paint and the wood translates well on camera because this is a stunning car. This is a, a 1949 Chrysler Town & Country. They only made about a thousand of these in the entire run in 1949. This car was owned by one family for over 38 years. And what's cool for 1949 is that this had a, a power convertible top as well as it does have a uh, a radio and a, a clock down in there extremely extremely cool car we'll take you a walk around the outside of it the restoration quality on this vehicle is extremely done i know that Woodies don't bring as much as they used to, but guys, I'm telling you, this car is beautiful. They are asking $75,000 for the 49 Chrysler, and the phone number is right there. So this is a 1903 Thomas Model 18, and this car only has eight brake horsepower, and I'll show you that it originally was created by a gentleman named Erwin Thomas, and he started out making basically engines for bikes, kind of turning them into motorcycles, as well as tricycles. I'm gonna give you a walk around around the outside of this vehicle. I think that there's only about two known in the entire world. You can see the Domus logo down there. So this is a, a pretty, pretty rare vehicle. I'm not aware of how much these go for in the market, but they do have the, the white rubber wheels and black rubber didn't start until about 1910. What's really cool is that they call this a rear tonneau entry vehicle. And the reason being is because that you actually would unlatch the backpack here, open this up, and step inside to get in the back. Hey, I know that bike. Danny, what's going on, buddy? Hey, how you doing? Doing good, long hey, time no see. Good to see you, Hershey, <laughs> yes. You got your bike here for sale. Yes, it's for sale. I decided I'm gonna, I hate to do it, but I'm gonna try to park with it, as long as it goes to a good home. What are, you, what are you asking for? I know you were thinking about selling them. You weren't really sure if you were getting rid of it or not, but. Probably 79K. 79K, yeah. okay. Brand new motor, it runs beautiful. It's mostly original. You do have some stuff over here you were telling me that, that there's early Harley stuff. Can yep. you take a look at that? There's some new old stock stuff up here. And you got you got a lot of new old stock, don't you? Yeah. A buddy of mine bought up a large percentage of all the government war surplus stuff years ago. Okay. So I was fortunate enough to get a lot of that from him. So I sell this stuff. It's a good seller. All of this stuff too. I've got motors for sale, bikes for sale. Yep. Ton, tons and tons of Harley stuff. And you know, I, I've been around a long time. I mean, $15, $10 for even just genuine Harley packaging like that, for, that's a pretty good deal in my opinion. Very reasonable price. Yep. I mean, I'm sure that we could walk a few rows down and find it for twice or three times the price. Easily. Yep. I'd probably sell it cheaper than anybody in here. <laughs> I, would, I would bet that you're not going to find it cheaper than oh. in here. Are those uh, boxes original? Is that original a... crates from the military. And all of these parts are new from the 40s. That's one of the original crates that they didn't cover up the Harley label on them. Usually they painted over it. When you say the government, is that war issued stuff? Yeah, this was okay. all from World War II. Okay. All Army surplus. Okay. And of course, after the war, all of the stuff they had back in there, they all auctioned off. But they didn't want the auction after the auctions for the tags to go on, so they usually made them spray painted off. Oh, But a lot of them, yeah, a lot of them got gone through. Now, does that does that add value to the box itself? Exactly. Okay. Yep. Exactly. And Very hard to get. A lot of people like to collect them. And what is, uh, what is what is this thing over here? Is that yours as well? or? That's my buddy's. It's a 1918 International. We'll go ahead and take a look at that. Wow. Talk yep. about a barn find. It's got the hand crank on it to start it. And it actually runs and drives. Here it says International. 
And uh, now this one's here for the show. You can see it says hands off. It's not. It's not for sale. It does. You said it runs and drives. Runs and drives. He'll have it out probably tomorrow, driving around. Well, Danny, I appreciate your time. If uh, if anybody's interested in Harley parts, your phone number is there. I'll have them give you a call. I appreciate it. It's good seeing you, buddy. Great to see you. Okay, have fun. Find some treasure out there. Now this car's kind of cool. This is a, a 1915 Ford Coupe Clay. So they had the the original Model T. However, this was a a little bit more expensive so the the model t cost around i think about 480 dollars this would have been about 600 dollars brand new they made about 300 of them but they just they didn't they didn't sell well there's around 50 known left in in existence today and this one has uh we can see here it says scat crank which would be a basically a balanced crankshaft uh turbo discs for the transmission um everything's just been kind of updated so that you can kind of drive it around here maybe at the show or at home but what's different about this car is the whole top actually comes the the whole way back down that way you can have uh, heat inside there in the winter just stay warm keeps you out of the uh, elements uh, when you're going down the road but very 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 well restored i'd be proud to have this car and if you're interested in getting hold of the owner his name and information is right here if this car doesn't scream class, I'm not sure what does. This is a 1930 Ford Packard 1101. And what that means, 1101, is the length of this car. They had several different versions. This is the 136 inch wheelbase version. You can see that it is a coupe, well, it is a, a roadster. And this car would have uh, an eight cylinder engine. And you can see here it says, Packard 8. That's basically the, the engine designation of the vehicle. It's extremely beautiful. You can see the owner's initials are here on the side of the car, something that was just common back then for the, the vehicles that were basically really expensive. Now, this car does have a, a 120 horsepower, and I just kind of want to go around the outside of it and show you exactly what you're getting. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful car. And Packards, of course, they all, the, the front of the all the Packard radiators kind of just looked like this coffin style nose, and that stayed that way until the 50s. This is a uh, 1912 Packard Model 30. The Model 30 was the, the basically the top of the line for Packard in 1912. You can see here at the phone number right here, it is for sale. But this is the uh, most original known 1912 Model 30 in existence, and it is the, the runabout, basically the, the stripped down version so that you can get around town as quick as possible. Let me know what you guys think about this car in the comments below. They sell a lot more here than just pre-war cars. We're over here in the car corral at Hershey. And the first car I wanna talk about is a 1970 Chevelle. This one is a super sport car. It is a, a 396, 350 horse car and it's done on red on red. Probably one of the nicest restored Chevelles I've seen in a while. We can show here that it is offered by Classic Cars Cafe from Putnam Valley, New York. Yeah, not a four speed, just on the column, does have the correct dash. Really, really, really clean car. But yeah, guys, there's more than just uh, Model A's and Model T's at this event. They do have some, some heavy hitter muscle, and this is also another one. This is a 1967 Corvette. It is a coupe, of course. This is a, an L79, so it does have the, the 327 with the 350 horsepower in there. But what's really cool about this car is all of the options that it came with. Now, it does have the leather. It does have the headrest. You can see all the way over there on that side, it does have the power windows, power steering. Very, very well optioned car. You can see the side pipes on it down here. Let me know what you guys think here about this car. They're offering it for uh, it doesn't have a price here, but you can see that it is for sale. There is the number. I believe it also is offered by the Classic Car Cafe here at Hershey. I had to film this car for you. This is a 1955 Chevrolet Corvette, and we'll take a look on the inside. Now, it's never been restored. It's in complete original condition. It's still got all the bents and dents down the side. However, that's not the original engine for this car. This is a 1965 283 with a 59 fuel injection set up on there. Could have fooled a, a lot of people, but that does, that is what it says on the, the paperwork over there. It does say that they only made about 700 produced and that this is uh, car number 20, 260. But what I think is really cool is you don't really get to see original first-gen Corvettes with the original fiberglass, original condition that's not painted very often. Look at, look at this dent down the side here. I mean, that's that's what these cars are, are, are made of. And a lot of times when they're sparkly and shiny, you don't really get to notice that. We'll take you around the outside. 
You can see the exhaust exits through the fiberglass panels. But you guys let us know at home, would you restore this car or would you leave it in this condition? We can take a look on the inside there. All the instrument panels look correct for the car. Wonder when it was last inspected. Up to that, well, I guess the guy drives it. In my opinion, one of the most beautiful Corvettes here at this year's Hershey event. The car beside the Corvette is this 69 Camaro. It does say sold. I know that this car was offered at $55,000 yesterday. It is uh, just a 350 hugger orange car, black interior. But I was really interested to see what would happen with it. A lot of crowd around this car. Really, really well done restoration. Really well presentable car. This one sold for $55,000. This is a 1968 Ford Mustang Fastback. It says GT on the side there. It does have the fog lamps. But what's really cool about this car is that it is an R code. And for those not familiar with 68, that means that it does have the big boy 428 Cobra Jet engine down inside. You can see the induction system here. It does have the smog set up on it. This car was done really, really well. I see a lot of Mustangs that are restored. It does have the correct battery top cover on here. But what I want to show you is uh, that letter right there. And that's what you want to look for when you're finding Mustang Fastbacks. It does say R. I believe it's blue. It's white with a blue C stripe. That's what that stripe is called. And Yes, it is a it is a GT. It does have the the pool lights down there, four speed. But how much are they asking for this car? The owner's asking a hundred and twenty nine thousand dollars for it. Is it Performance Motors? This car is pretty cool. This is a 1930 Willis Knight 66B. And what's really cool about this vehicle is that the owner actually drove it here from Michigan and it's his 11th time doing it. This is an all original 1930s car. It's his 11th trip to Hershey and he has 63,000 of those miles in the last 14 seasons. This car is not for sale. It is here just to show. It is a pretty rare car. This is a Willis Knight. What makes them different is they have a little bit different of a engine than a lot of other cars. They have have a, a sleeve cylinder wall and we'll learn exactly what that is here in just a moment but I think that that's one of the coolest radiator emblems that uh, I've ever seen we'll give you a walk around this vehicle like I said it's all original it's never been restored kind of like the, the the minivan uh, of its time you can see the luggage rack back here big bumpers in case you run into anything but just overall nice vehicle presents really really well so I'm standing here with Davey and Davey uh, is a, a member of the Willis nightclub is that correct that's correct yes and uh, he actually is going to explain to us what makes that Willis night vehicle that we just took a look at so different than a lot of other cars so Davey okay this is a demonstrator okay now here you have your piston and you have two sleeves Okay, you can see on the bottom is the sleeves here, and they are moving independently yeah. of your piston. From this angle too, you can see on see how the two the two sleeves, the two walls right there move independently. Right. That's kind of what he's what he's talking about. Right. That's not normal on a on a normal vehicle. It, correct. Yes. There's two crankshafts. You have your main crankshaft for the piston, and then you have this crankshaft for the sleeves, and each sleeve runs independently with these rods. Yeah, I've never never seen a, a sleeve valve engine or heard of basically how that works with uh, both of those sliding up and down in there, but you were telling me that they actually run better the, the more that they, they drive, is That's that right? That's correct. The more, the more you drive these engines, these cars, and the more carbon that gets in in these openings, the tighter they get and the more compression it makes. So the more compression it makes, the better it's gonna run. So they claim these engines will go 100,000 before you have to touch them. And that's 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 huge. I mean, back then you you, you exactly. were telling me you take them apart every 30,000? Oh, and a regular pop -it valve engine, you uh, maybe the 30,000 you're taking it apart to clean your valves where this you don't take it apart awesome we love learning new things here at Hershey Pennsylvania Davey thank you so okay, much okay thank you guys the car behind me is pretty rare this is a 1928 Pontiac Sport Phaeton we can see that it does have four doors and it is a convertible now they didn't really make a whole lot of these this is a, a six-cylinder car here we can see the the green motor down inside it does have uh, about 26 horsepower uh, 200 cubic inches all together Pretty original car. The owner did tell me that uh, the fenders on this car were repainted. Obviously, we can tell that by the condition. But the body looks to be original, and he did say that that is original paint. As well as the, the inside of this car doesn't look like it's been modernized or updated, but looks relatively comfortable to, to sit down in there and, and drive around. I'm not sure uh, where the market is on a car like this. We can see that uh, the phone number is right there. 
for the owner. His name is Jim and he's asking $60,000 for this vehicle. 